this week, a really nice kid, Tua, quarterback for the Dolphins, really, really nice guy. Good at the podium, got a little Dak Prescott quality, very, very likable guy, team first guy, sacrifice a lot for the team guy, impossible not to like, little small, wish his arm was stronger, had some injuries, not the perfect quarterback. Who cares? There's about two in the world. Um, But he called out Brian Flores, his first coach in the NFL, and he said, listen, man, he he was a terrible person. He treated me awfully, and uh, and now my other coach puts his arm around me, Mike McDaniel, and says, you're really valuable. He goes, how would you feel if somebody just made you feel like crap every day of your life? And it it made Brian Flores now a defensive coordinator, and a guy I think can really coach, but it made him look cruel. Um, and Brian Flores went to the mic yesterday in Minnesota as a coordinator and realized, uh, bro, this is a bad look. This is a really bad look for you. Here it is. You know, that hit me in a way that, you know, wasn't, I wouldn't say it was, you know, positive for me. Um, but at the same time, I, you know, I've got to use that and say, Hey, how can I, how can I grow from that? You know, how can I be better? Do I feel like, you know, that's me? No, but, you know, how can I grow from that situation and create a, create a world where that's not, you know, the case that anyone says that about, about Brian Flores. Autocratic versus Democratic. Sean McVay, his group of coaches are the latter, collaborative. I mean, this weekend, McVay let one of his assistants step to the sidelines, put the headset on and be the head coach. Growth collaborative, lubricate, pro player, not soft, can be harsh, can call guys out, but it's democratic over autocratic. And I think Brian Flores, to his credit, realizes there's a lot of different ways to coach, uh, but there is an old school Belichickian camp. And I think we've reached a new time in the NFL. That doesn't mean, I mean, at at the college level, you see a lot of screamers still. Uh, You don't see that stuff in the NFL. It just doesn't work with players. Most make more than the coaches. But I do think there's a reality to what is happening, and Brian Flores is quickly realizing it, is that the Belichick guys, they're not even getting interviewed for jobs. Bill got one interview. So you can do, there's a lot of ways to coach. But Flores for him to spend that much time at the mic off, I mean, a lot of times if somebody said something to rip Andy Reid, he wouldn't give it two seconds. Or somebody ripped Sean McVay, he wouldn't give it two seconds. Brian Flores, who's a quiet guy, who doesn't love the media, sat up there and took the arrows, and he understood it. Dude, you're not getting another job. And by the way, I think that's one of the reasons he took Minnesota to learn from what they call the tall Sean McVay, Kevin O'Connell. Much more Zach Taylor, Kevin O'Connell, Raheem Morris, Sean McVay, D'Amico Ryans, Kyle Shanahan, the players like them, they like the players. Uh, Flores uh, yesterday, uh, here's more on the two shots at him and, and kind of looking at himself in the mirror. Part of coaching is, is correcting. You know, I'm always going to correct. Look, I've done a lot of reflecting and, you know, on, on the situation, you know, Reflecting on the situation, communication. Uh, you know, I think there's things that I could do better, for sure. And I've grown in that way. And I've tried to apply the things that I could do better and the things that I've learned, you know, over the last, you know, two, three years. I think Brian Flores, in my opinion, is too good of a coach not to get a second chance. He's way too good of a coach. He got Miami by, it was a mess. And like week seven or eight, you were watching the Dolphins when he was coach and thinking, Their defense and special teams are both elite in eight weeks. So I think he'll get another shot. But the other thing that hurts the autocratic guys, the old school guys, there's a little Wizard of Oz here. Brady left, it all came crumbling down. Now the guys can't get interviews. Brady left, won a Super Bowl elsewhere. 11 years of Belichick without Brady, got one playoff win. So there's a little bit of, uh, you know, it, it got, you know, everybody pulled back the curtain once Brady left, and it really didn't work. It just worked with Tom because Tom allowed it to work. J Mac with the news. No, 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 no. Turn on the news. This is the Herdline News. So the one interesting uh, quarterback competition battle in the preseason is in Pittsburgh, where Russell Wilson and Justin Fields continue to battle 
Well, two coaches have spoke up, two legendary coaches, I should add, uh, about the battle, and both Bill Belichick and Bill Cowher said the Steelers should go with Russ, who is still number one on the Jep chart. Um, Colin, you agree with these guys? It's going to be Russ? Would you I, go I, with Russ? I would start with him. I mean, I, I, I almost, despite what everybody says, I think there's like an understanding like Russ gets the first shot at it. And again, it would be one thing if we watched Justin Fields last week against Buffalo and it was Shazam. <laughs> they were both a mess. So if they're both struggling, just go with the experienced guy. It's probably what will happen. Yeah. I don't know that well, it's going to last long. <laughs> their offensive line has a lot of issues, and I'm not sure Tomlin can solve it. But in fairness, they've had all sorts of injuries, and they're shuffling guards and tackles around. They have a, I think they have a rookie of center, so he's, you know, it's it's that's a hard position to come in as a rookie. So, like a lot of Pittsburgh's issues, I think, are cultural. They just don't that that unit has not been good forever. But in fairness, they're moving. It's musical chairs with their O-line right now, and Fields and Russell Wilson are paying for it. Yeah, we talked about newness in Washington. Uh, you know, Pittsburgh, new quarterback, new OC. Like, newness can be tough. And I I just i am not optimistic on the Steelers team. And no, I, I, I still see Steelers fans out there. I don't know if they're delusional or maybe I'm missing something. No, I think I, I got uh, feedback from two different people in the Pittsburgh media on my Tomlin criticism who reached out and said thank you. Oh, is that, he, they, that there is this sort of protective layer that you can't criticize okay, Tomlin. Yeah. And my take is we fired Andy Reid and Belichick. <laughs> Give me a break. Like, like if you could fire those guys, Marty Schottenheimer, people moved off him. Yeah. And Marty Schottenheimer was 14 and two last time, you know, with the Chargers, yeah. with a dysfunctional organization at the time, I thought. So like I, we move off coaches very quickly. Yeah, and, and we being critical of Tomlin doesn't mean you don't like him. He, everybody's, yeah. listen, Patrick Mahomes, had a rough season last year. Yeah. I'm criticizing about it. Yeah. Brock Purdy moves well, his pants against uh, in that Sunday night Pat, football game against the Ravens. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna hammer him. He had a bad game. Pat Riley has said multiple times, you get about ten years and people need a new voice. So it's 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 hard. I mean what what Spolster is doing, new team, new guys, new it's you have to have the GM in your corner. Again, people think like Pete Carroll had a magical decade in Seattle, but I thought at the end it was time to go. I, I thought John Snyder won the tug of war. I thought the drafts were better than the results. It, it's okay. Like it, there are just certain jobs. Maybe I'm in one. It never ends well. Like politics, sportscasters, and football coaches. It, it you know, Andy Reid will probably be able to call his own shots. That's like one of a hundred. Sean Payton left New Orleans on his accord. That is so rare. That is so rare. Uh, let's move on to Josh Allen, who is one of the top quarterbacks in the league. Oh, man, a lot of people have him right behind Mahomes. Some people have Burrow. Either way, Allen's a top three quarterback in the league. But he's not paid like it. This is interesting. He is currently the 13th highest paid quarterback in the NFL due to average uh, salary per year. Remember, he signed his deal in 2021. Allen says he doesn't have a problem with his current deal. Listen, everyone's going to have their day. Um, and I'm happy that everyone's getting what they're worth, right? And I think that uh, as the game progresses and, and guys keep getting paid again, the market is the market. And I've got no problem with where I'm at right now. And, uh, you know, I, I had my day a couple years ago, and I'm sure someday I'll have it again, you know. But I think the main thing is the main thing, and that's playing football to the best of my ability, and everything else will take care of itself. So he comes from a good family in a small town. He's not driven by money. So let's give him credit. Secondly, he's made a lot of money. Um, third, he has a big body type. So the chances are he'll play a long, long time in this league. He's not Hurts or Tua or a smaller quarterback. Mm -hmm. He's he's now Cam wasn't nearly as good as Josh Allen. Uh, I think Josh is going to last a long time. Uh, I, I think Josh takes care of himself better than Ben or Cam did. And, and still, um, you know, those guys had nice careers. So. I, I did all this about being paid a lot of money. Like, it's such a turnoff to me. Like, let's not make the NFL the NBA where we keep track of everybody's paycheck. Like, he gets paid a lot and he's great. I'm, I'm good with it. The only pushback I would say is the style, the brand of football he plays is rugged. He takes a lot of hits. He does. We saw Cam Newton out of the NFL at, like, yeah. what, 31? Yeah, Cam took like, a lot of he hits. He took a lot of hits. Allen, I know, is working on sliding and um, ran, a, I think, a little less last year. But... 
If I'm him, he's got to restructure after the season. Right? You, you can't continue to be 13th highest paid. Brock I, Purdy's going to pass you next year. Like, I, you don't think he should restructure? I think he should win as many games as he can, and well, I think he'll be obvious. fine. That's well, obvious. Contract-wise, though. I think restructure or not, he'll be able to afford a very nice condo in downtown you're Buffalo. You're dancing it around. Hey, you know, you're, you're very driven. The billionaires. You're, you're driven by money. I want the guys to get paid. I, NFL stands I for want not my, for long. Josh Allen's no. two hits away from being You know done. what I want? I want my teams to be flexible. You want your guys to get paid. You're new media. I want my team to be flexible. I, the Patriots were flexible and have rings. By the way, Kansas City is flexible. I, you go We're ahead. Flexible. Get, your, they to get, get off Tyreek Hill. They got off Legereus Sneed. That's right. Flexible. That's right. We're not paying a receiver that. Bye bye. Let's start right. over. Well, the Bills just did that with Diggs. They're flexible. We'll move off Diggs. That's we'll right. go to tight ends. Like, I think you could do both. You could be flexible and pay your quarterback. Dallas is going to pay CD Lamb a fortune, Micah a fortune, Dak a fortune. Not really flexible. If you if you were asking me what I would do, I would I would pay CD Lamb a fortune. And I would have drafted a quarterback three years ago, but they're not, they're not, Dallas is not as flexible as you think. They're very insular. It's all about signing their guys. Dallas is not flexible. They're not well run. We can admit that. Well, I'm not, they're not poorly run, but they're not as what? flexible. If you're flexible, you bring somebody into that building that doesn't have the last name Jones and they run your personnel, mm -hmm. not somebody named Jones. I mean, That's the, flexible. The, the, it's going to be tough. The Bills had to move off to both safeties. Now they're aging, but. Allen's contract is onerous. That's just where we are. you got to pay the quarterback a lot. I mean, how many quarterbacks they cycle through after Jim Kelly? Remember how good of a run he had? They are paying him a lot. He's not, they're not short. They're just 13th the, highest paid quarterback in the that's league. That's the way it works because every two years, there's seven guys that sign. Well, Mahomes restructured. Yes, he's the world's greatest football player. Yeah, Josh Allen's probably second. Uh, Josh Allen has never even gotten to a Super Bowl. Mahomes has, what, three rings already? Two, three rings? It matters. That's the difference between right. getting to a conference championship and winning the trophy. I, I wonder where the audience lands. Do they want to pay the oh, quarterbacks the, or do they want the billionaires? I've, I've said this for years. Them. This this in, incessant need by young media to everybody get the bag. If I owned a team, I would pay big money and frequently. I would be flexible. I would pay the people that I drafted and hit. So you draft Josh Allen first round, you pay him. But if you're looking to be the highest paid guy, I'll just let you know. I may not be able to build that offensive line as well as you like, and we're going to draft a quarterback every other year behind you, and he'll get snaps in the preseason and in camp. I don't think he needs highest paid, but certainly we'll restructure. We want to keep you happy. Josh, we're going to bump you up, and I'm sure he would Thankfully, like Thankfully, the NFL is still run by adults in their 40s and 50s, capologists. It's not run solely by employees, players. I want... GMs to GM, coach to coach, players to play, owners to own. I'm really comfortable with that. It is interesting. I don't do programming for this network. I talk. Tyree and I'm Kill very comfortable with that. Chirped in Miami. I Hey, everybody else is getting paid. All the receivers. I need to all get right. paid now. And Dolphins bent over backwards and restructured Tyree Kill. And because of that, after a few injuries last year, they weren't as good defensively. Yeah, they're not going to be great this year. Final story is Jerry Jones gave an update, kind of ish, on where things stand with C.D. Lamb and Dak Prescott's contract negotiations. With C.D., he said both sides are having promising talks regarding an extension. But with Dak, he seemed to hint that nothing will get done during camp, saying that since the season is approaching, they're operating under his existing contract. Well, of course. Yes, he's got a con. There's no reason to redo Dak right now. He's got a year left. There's absolutely no reason. Now, this idea, when did we become, when did it become the NBA where I have to pay you before? How about you just go to the end of your contract and, you know, four to five months before, you can wrap up a contract in two weeks. Agent Jerry, sit down. Here's the numbers. Get close to it. This idea that you have to pay everybody early. No, Brandon Ayuk's got a year left. So remember the Kirk Cousins situation in Minnesota. He was on his final year, gets the injury to the Achilles. And they moved off him. Exactly. You think Dak is not a little Oh, you think it'd be that? better for the Vikings if they would have gone a million, billion dollars into him and he's hurt. Well, and I, then you're trapped. I think Kirk Cousins is just okay. Well, I but, I, but I think Dak's just okay. You think it, you, you, by the way, I give Dak a new contract tomorrow. Week 11, rips up his knee. Second major injury. Oh, congrats on being irrelevant. Why are you got, what, what is this insistence to pay everybody early? Well, it, I mean, again. You know, you tear up a knee as a quarterback. At, That's your that, problem. 30? That's not mine as an owner. I am 
preserving. This is more than just about a singular star. True. It's about true. protecting and the franchise, the viability. You know what fans like to go see on Sunday? Winning. You're not. If you pay a quarterback early, he gets hurt, and you're done. So 12 wins each of the last three years. That's a lot of winning the Cowboys fans. It's a January-February league. Also it's not true. a September now, league. He has not delivered in the postseason. I, I, again, I'm not saying I'm worried about Dak. He's made a lot of money. But again, week three, he goes out, pops in Achilles, whatever. It's like, sorry, dude. You don't have any, any insurance going forward. Like, who knows where you'll be next year? Yeah. Who's paying for... A top dollar for a guy coming off. Well, the Dallas, case. Dallas is becoming the Steelers. They won't get the heir apparent ready. Brady They've done had a poor job, no question about it. I would be drafting quarterbacks. I would have drafted one this year. That Trey Lance trade an overpay and well, whatever. I, I, it, I would draft quarterbacks. Once a quarterback's late. had a, even Joe Burrow, you got to start drafting quarterbacks every year. Once a guy's had a second injury, I'm drafting quarterback. Doesn't mean in first, second, or third, but I'm going to have a guy ready to roll. I mean, next year, it's very possible that the Rams want they, Rams want Matt Stafford for the next three years, and Stafford's camp is saying, we want to play for three years. I would not be shocked if the Rams' number one pick next year 